is Sarah. Welcome to the It's a Sarah podcast. Today is Monday, October 3rd. Oh, my dog is, is here. Today is Monday, October 3rd, and this is episode 40. And that's nice because that's also my age, 40. And that's only happening once, I guess. My dog is under my table with the camera on it, with my phone on it. Scratching now. I hope you can't hear it because that it's not a sound I want at the beginning of my podcast. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hey. Come here, Bobby. Come here. Come here. Look, oh, you can see. Here she is. Here she is. No, you can't see her. Okay, get some sleep, lady. I think she uh, she wants to go for a walk. But we we already went this morning, and I want to make an episode and not walk. She needs some attention, I guess. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, my name is Sarah and I'm coming to you from the Netherlands. So excuse my Dutch English. I love to knit, I love to crochet and I love to talk. So uh, that's why uh, the perfect combination for this knitting podcast. It's also a crochet podcast, but mainly knitting at the moment. Oh, <laughs> I'm a bit distracted. I'm sorry. She's so cute. I can't, I can't show her. Huh? Um, I will tell you about my handwerk perikele from last week. And handwerk perikele is Dutch for crafting adventures, I guess. Um, I will tell you about my finished objects, about my works in progress, about my uh, acquisitions, about my plans and other stuff, I guess, about my arm a bit uh, this uh, this day, so uh, this time. So uh, I hope you have some time and uh, let's do some knitting or crochet while watching. I I love watching knitting podcasts by myself. No, not, not by myself, not my own knitting podcast, but knitting podcasts from other knitters or crocheters. I really love it. And um, I do it all the time. And um, it's it's so nice to see all the inspiration and all the stuff. Come, not here. Bobby, come, come. <laughs> okay, um, let's start. Uh, what I'm wearing? Uh, I'm wearing uh, my headband. It's uh, I wear it all the time. Uh, so maybe you have seen it before. It's one of my favorites. I have two favorites. And this is the braided cabled ear warmer or otherwise cabled braided ear warmer. I always forget. Uh, a free pattern on Ravelry from Jessica Calvay. And I will link it below. Oh yeah, that reminds me. I have, uh, has, have to say th first... Um, you can find me as It's a Sarah everywhere or oh, everywhere. You can find me on Instagram. I'm very active on Instagram daily uh, in Dutch. <laughs> I, I've tried um, once to do it in English and Dutch both, but it, it takes too much time. And um, although I love to do it, it's, it's, yeah, all, it, it's all for my knitting time, for my crafting time. So um, I decided to do it in Dutch. Uh, but you can see, still see the pictures and uh, Instagram has a translation button. So when I make a post and you can translate that in um, your own language, you can follow it and all the stories. Um, I, I follow uh, people uh, in other languages as too, um, Danish or Swede Swedish. I don't, uh, uh, I don't understand, but I do enjoy the the. the the views, the, the pictures and the, and the stories, and uh, that's nice. So you can find me on Instagram as it's a Sarah, and uh, you can also find me on Ravelry as, it, as it's a Sarah. I have a quite accurate project page um, in, uh, on which, in which, uh, on which, um, uh, there I uh, 
take all my notes and um, you can find all the details about my projects which I'm telling you about uh, when you have to look when you want to look back oh gosh Let's uh, let's start about the knitting. Uh, what I wear, uh, that one I will link below in the show notes. Everything I talk about, I will link below. When I forget something, please um, comment me and I will try to edit. Um, I try to reply every comment, but uh, it's a bit, uh, it's, uh, quite a lot at the moment. And that's that's perfect. I love it because I, I love all the... Um, I love all the interaction with other people, but um, I can keep up. I can't keep up with it. It's too much. So uh, when I do only uh, do a little hard, just know I, I've enjoyed your uh, comment or your lovely words so much. Um, and I would like to reply everything, but it's all for my knitting time. So I want to do it all. Um, but I also have to sleep at night and I have three kids and a dog and a husband so um, and a house. So I do my best, but it doesn't always work out. Mm. Okay, um, but I will link everything, everything below so you can find it there. Uh, okay, the other finished object. The, the other thing I'm wearing is also my first finished object and it's the anchor sweater my size. Um, it's a quite unexpected knit for myself because uh, it wasn't my, my intention to knit it for myself. Um, it wasn't my intention to knit it at all, uh, but it happened. It happened. Um, I started the anchor sweater in February this year, but I wasn't uh, happy about um, uh, the knitting and it was the start of my uneven stitches and oh, I forgot to tell uh, uh, to tell something about it in my Dutch episode I remember now but um, my knitting was quite uneven and uh, it was so ugly so I put it away um, but um, I had a few uh, skeins of yarn a few yarn balls um, they were gifted to me five years ago three years ago i don't know it's a merino yarn from um yarn and colors it's a dutch yarn company and um uh, they uh they were gifted to me to try but they, i i don't know why why i didn't work with it because i love the color it's olive green and i do love merino yarn merino wool um but yeah i don't know and and a few weeks ago i uh, it suddenly felt I have to knit an anchor sweater with it right now. And um, I have uh, I had this feeling, I have it all, uh, still, this feeling. Um, it's, it's absolutely coming with autumn. You want to knit all the things. You want to knit, you want to make all the things and you want to knit all the things and you want to turn all the, uh, all your stash, all your yarn stash into sweaters and uh, shawls and warm layers for winter that's what i was feeling so i thought let's make me uh, uh, an anchor sweater and it's a quite high neckline it's not not especially my thing but maybe one of my girls will wear it and they they won't they will not be yarn balls in my stash but they will be a sweater and someone will have a warm layer this winter oh that someone is me <laughs> so, oh, um, I was knitting on it and I may, I started the small, the smallest size, uh, extra small, because, um, usually for my, for myself, for me, I make a uh, size, uh, small, but, um, uh, my daughters are both smaller than I am. Um, uh, the, yeah, they are both. Um, so, um, I started the size extra small. I didn't, I just followed the pattern in my, um, first try to make an anchor sweater i did some adjustments to um uh, to make a wider neckline it has already quite a wide neckline but i it, because i don't like high necklines i want some space i tried something else and that worked out good the the, the rest of the sweater not but that that part does of uh, did um uh, but because it it was not my intention to knit it for myself i followed the pattern um except for the short rows at the back um, but i followed the pattern i did go down one needle size because i'm a loose knitter i knitted this continental i'm a loose knitter so i uh, went down one needle size the pattern says four millimeters i started with 3.5 for the sleeves i used 3.75 and for the cuffs and the ribbing at the bottom i used three so um 
let's uh <laughs> when i was i i did add a uh, short rows because i wanted to lift it a bit in the back and uh the, the, yeah i i am wearing a tank top under it now a short sleeved sweater oh there's a neighbor i'm i always feel quite embarrassed when i'm filming and someone's uh, passing by it's an exercise for me to uh to don't bother and uh, but i will but uh, <laughs> I, I will try to, I'm a bit distracted now, but I try to talk. Are you okay? Yes, are you okay? Yeah. Um, I think it's nicer with only a tank top under it. I now wear a, a T, a V-neck uh, with a V. That was the only thing. The other stuff, the, my rounded necklines were in the laundry. And um, I feel more comfortable wearing um, a t-shirt with short sleeves or long sleeves under it. This time short sleeves. It's quite warm in the Netherlands, but in uh, right now, but in the morning it's uh, it's very cold. So I want a layer under it. And um, when I wear something uh, next to my skin, I don't smell like flowers under my arms usually after a busy day. I don't know how it's uh, how you are, but I don't, <laughs> and I don't care. Um, but uh, when I wear something which is right under my um, do you call it armpits? I throw it in a washing machine. Um, but I don't want to wash my woody sweaters too often. Uh, so when I have a layer under it, I put uh, this one in the washing machine. And this one can um, I hang out in, in the garden and it, uh, with some fresh air and it's totally okay. So, um, but I think it would be nicer when this was away. My necklace, do you call it a necklace? Ketting? We say ketting. My necklace was a bit too long for this one and it was staying uh, over, but I uh, borrowed one of my, uh, for, uh, a necklace for my daughter. It's almost exactly the same. And this size, this is a bit shorter. So it's better with this sweater. It's better with this sweater. That's a, ni that's a nice sentence. Um, okay, so my daughters weren't, uh, were both not interested in this sweater. And when I finished it and I put it on, um, I thought, hmm, I like it and it was quite unexpected because of the neckline because of the fit but it's it's quite it's maybe a little it's zero ease or, or a little bit negative ease but I love it I love it when I was filming my Dutch podcast I discovered very uh remarkable short rows I don't like that I uh I was kind of disappointed when I didn't saw it uh, they are on my back I added the short rows and I started only um here because I I I know I'm not a neat short row knitter so I didn't want it on my breast it uh, yeah that wouldn't be nice um and this side is okay but here you can see them oh I think it's quite, uh, oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. It's quite annoying, but they are on my back. So I will try to forget they are there. Also, the increases, no, the decreases uh, uh, on the sleeves are quite visible. And merino yarn is not forgivable. And I need forgivable yarn. And I was, uh, it is my plan to make one in non superwash yarn, in Let Lopi or maybe another uh, another one. And I think it, it, that would be better. But merino yarn feels very soft and nice on the skin. And it's very, uh, the, the fit is perfect. And I'm quite, um, the, the, the neckline doesn't bother me right now. So I, I don't know why, because it's still high. I maybe... It's okay. I feel very comfortable in in this sweater. So I'm. Uh, I, I think I added to my own uh, wardrobe. I think I do. I already did. I'm wearing it. So um, I think it, it's a perfect match. It matches also the color with quite a lot of my uh, skirts and dresses. So um, and when uh, winter is coming, uh, I can uh, put a vest, uh, a cardigan over it. Uh, we say I, I always call it a vest, but in 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 English, a vest is a spencer. Um, and uh, and uh, you call it a cardigan. I did some some no, no, some adjustments. Um, at first, I did um, not a one by one ribbing at the sleeves and at the cuffs. I uh, uh, at the cuffs and at the the bottom hem. I did a two by two. The pattern says one by one, and it's um, logic. 
uh, because this is also one by one, but I'm uh, very addicted to two by two rib. And I was, it was my plan to make a one by one rib, but my hands refused. They don't want to a uh, one by one rib. They want two by two rib. So um, yeah, I have nothing to tell here. It just happened, two by two rib, and I'm very uh, happy with it, with the result. Um, I did make long cuffs. I love long cuffs. You can wear it so, uh, this way and um, uh, under your cardigan or coat and it's nice and warm and uh, you can felt them double when uh, when you uh, need your hands and uh, yeah, you want to show your bracelets, <laughs> I think. So I'm very happy with this sweater and um, yeah, nice to have uh, a new piece in my wardrobe. Did I tell you all about it? No, I guess, I guess, I guess. Okay, next finished object. Uh, I casted it on uh, last Saturday and um, uh, yesterday evening I finished it, yesterday afternoon actually. Um, these are two lovely cutie baby booties. Uh, I have a friend with a little baby. He is uh, six months, a lovely boy, a big boy, quite a big boy, but he is six months. And um, his mother, my friend, wants to, wanted to knit him some uh, baby booties, woolly uh, baby booties. Um, uh, but she is not um, an advanced knitter. Uh, she can knit. But um, uh, she has not as much experience with knitting patterns as um, uh, as needed to knit some baby booties um, without taking too much brain space. Um, her baby is number four, her fourth child. And um, you can imagine that um, uh, when you don't have much sleep at night and you have to take care of all the kids and all the stuff, um, you don't have much brain space for learning new things. Um, of course, it's different for, for everyone, but I recognize that uh, yeah, very good. When I had little children, I oh. <laughs> it was quite hard to do all that without with some, uh, some babies sleep all night. Mine don't, didn't. Hers <laughs> don't. Don't do it. Oh, the grammar. I, I struggle with the grammar. Um, uh, her baby uh, doesn't sleep uh, a good night as well. So um, I, she showed me some patterns and asked him for advice. And I said, uh, shall I knit them for you? And she was very happy. And I was happy too. Not, not immediately. Because when I was looking to the patterns, they were all knitted flat, straight. And then soon sewn together. I hate sewing my knitwear together. Uh, I don't like it. I um, I'm not good at it. Um, so I wanted to knit in the round, but I couldn't find a nice pattern. And then I texted her, sh "Shall I make him some uh, a pair of socks, uh, thick socks for uh, over his uh, normally socks?" And see, see, uh, everything was okay. She <laughs> she was glad she hadn't. Uh, she wouldn't have to make it them herself. Um, so every, everything was okay for her, but finally I um, I found some inspiration to do a bit of that and to do, to do a bit of this and then uh, make this lovely baby uh, booties. Um, I knitted them top down. I used Rauma Finul uh, in the color 422 dark brown. I love dark brown. I've used it as my contrast color for my sparky sweater I knitted last year. Can't wait, can't wait to wear it again. Um, but this is a leftover and um, I made these lovely baby booties. I cast it on eight stitches. Can you see it? Uh, from toe up, I knitted them in the round with magic loop. Cast it on eight stitches, increased to 16 stitches, so 32 total. Then knit two rows. I have the, the notes on my project page on Reverie. When you make the, want to make them for your, uh, for also for a baby, you can uh, find my notes to get inspired. Then I um, uh, was inspired by the rye socks from Tink and Knits to make this front panel uh, as a garter stitch panel. You have to uh, knit one row and purl one row. I um, the two stitches at the at the first and the last two stitches I uh, knitted and then um, um, alternate knit and purl. Do you say it like that? I don't know. The back I made a uh, stockinette. He can't walk, walk. He's six months. He's a very big boy. Very, very big six month old boy. boy. Um, 
but he can't walk. Um, after uh, I thought I was at the right uh, length, I did a shadow wrap short row heel with garter stitch. So it was nice and squishy. And then I knitted seven rows in pattern and I started the cuff. And I made a 40 row cuff, two by two rib. So it's extra long, so you can do it over his pants or leggings or fold it double for having some booties. And uh, C uh, gave me the measure measurements for his feet. And I thought it's quite big, it's quite big. And the wide is okay, I guess. And the length I was measuring this way. His feet are 11 centimeters right now. and. Um, I have to add a bit extra because he's growing like uh, crazy. So, and it's nice when he can uh, wear them all winter. Um, but, and, and this is, uh, this way it's 12 centimeters and it's perfect. But when I did, when I fold them this way, they looked much bigger to me. Oh, and um, uh, a, a bit too big, actually. This is 13 centimeters and I'm not sure if they are too big or not, um, but I will see him tomorrow and I will try them on. And um, maybe it's okay because they're, it's, they're not socks, they're for over his socks. And maybe it's okay. And when they are really way too big, I knit the, a new pair and a bit smaller. So um, I now know what I wanted and how I wanted it, uh, how I want it. So they will uh, be finished quite, uh, quite quickly. So lovely baby booties. Uh, they aren't blocked. They won't. Be, they will not be blocked <laughs> because I don't have time for it, and it's not necessary. But I love the yarn. I love the. I love the look of them, and I hope I will love the shape of uh, the the fit also. Um. Okay. These were my only two finished objects for this week. Um, I did work on my Stria cardigan. I told you last week that I was uh, in the middle of a mistake, fixing a mistake. And it's, this is my work for the slow knitting along, for a knit along from, uh, for, uh, of a, a knit along from a Dutch podcaster, My House of Wool, with a focus on slow knitting. This cardigan will be a cardigan for um, spring and summer 2023. So it uh, doesn't need to be finished um, soon. So I work on it now and then in uh, on a quiet moment with a nice cup of coffee or tea, um, with no knitting podcast on my laptop or television, just sitting me is sitting on my couch in a nice place and knitting some needles, uh, some rows. And uh, it, it grows very slowly, but it feels very nice and it makes me very happy. I also worked a bit on my Urshina sweater from Jacqueline Seaslack. I told you about last week, but I was at the... Um, uh, I, I, uh, put the stitches for the uh, sleeve on my needle and I'm a continental knitter. I'm a bit out of my ide knitting identity crisis. <laughs> I'm a continental knitter, but on a short, um, is it a nine inch circular needle? I prefer to knit English style. So the sleeves I prefer to knit English style. So I did for this sweater and I also will do it for my Urshina. But I have a little bit of a knitting injury. I have a very, very painful shoulder and uh, it bothers me quite. Uh, uh, yeah, it bothers me actually. The um, um, it, it In the night, uh, it, I have no pain when I'm knitting, especially when I'm continental knitting. I don't feel anything. But when I'm um, doing my laundry or I have to uh, pick something out of the kitchen border, kitchen, kitchen border, out of the kitchen, um, it hurts very much. And um, it, it wakes me uh, while I'm sleeping at night. And that's not good. That's not good. So um, I ha did make a, an appointment. Tomorrow I have an appointment. I don't know how you call it in English. But um, in Dutch we say fysiotherapeut. But I don't want to go to there. Uh, I, uh, they do good work, absolutely. But I wasn't feeling... They are going to say, oh, you, you have... Uh, um, you have to take some rest. You uh, can't knit. <laughs> I won't do it. You have to do some exercises. I won't do it. So I thought, why should I go to someone? Uh, it only takes time and I won't do it anyway. I, I didn't feel it. But I have a nice um, 
friend, a lovely friend, and she does, um, um, in Dutch we call it foot reflex, with your feet, uh, uh, a special massage with your feet, and all the meridians, Merid is, it, is that the English word? Um, in your feet you have all the points, when you push at it, it's on another place in your body, and all the, all the. Nah, I, I don't know how to explain it, maybe you say, ah, oh, that's the... My, uh, I will go, I, I, I texted her, I have a, uh, my shoulder hurt, my shoulder hurts, can you do something with it, can you do some, is it, is it a good idea to come to you, to make an appointment with you, and she said, yeah, I can help you, I can help you, so tomorrow I will go and she will massage my feet, and uh, then my shoulder <laughs> will be better, I hope, so, uh, so I, uh, that's the reason why I didn't work as much as my, uh, on my Ursina, because I, um, I have to change, uh, I have to alternate continental and English style knitting because otherwise my shoulder would be, uh, um, I would ask too much for my shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also cast it on a new sock. Uh, 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 for the uh, last week I showed you two socks. I finished two separate uh, pairs of socks and I uh, cast it on uh, one of the two uh second socks, <laughs> um, but also didn't work as much as uh, on that, uh, so I don't have to show it to you. I have a new cast on, that's more interesting to tell you about. Uh, yesterday evening I finished my sweater Friday, I finished the booties this weekend, and yesterday evening I had the time to cast, finally cast on my test knit for Rebecca from the Crea Bea podcast. You all know her, and if you don't, go to her podcast. Um, she had launched her first knitting pattern last Friday, the Cargill sweater. Do I say it good? Cargill? Yeah, it's, it's right. It's right. I immediately, immediately bought that pattern and I was not the only one, I think, because, oh, it's such a lovely stitch pattern. I, I fell in love when I saw it um, uh, a few months ago and she showed it in her podcast, but it's a high neckline sweater and I don't prefer the high neckline. So um, uh, I didn't, um, uh, didn't reply for the test knit, uh, but when I saw the pattern, I, I, I just bought it. For, I think it's a raglan, I don't know, but I can make my own lower neckline with the same stitch pattern and follow the rest, so that's okay. But her second design to come, although I don't, I'm not sure if it is, she has more uh, designs uh, planned, but her second sweater design is the Curve Sweater. And the Curve Sweater is a lovely sweater, also with a high neckline and a, a color work over here and on the sleeves. And I loved it immediately, but I don't like the high neckline. It's not on me, not on my body. Although I do love this, so maybe it's changing. That that would be that would be nice when it's changing. But um, uh, I was watching her podcast, and my twelve-year-old daughter said, "Oh, I like that sweater." And ah, oh, I, I, I said, oh, I, "I, I, want to knit something for my daughters, for my girls, for, also for my son and for my husband." But they are not. Oh, they are not. Um, Net worthy at the moment, I guess. Um, uh, I don't know. I think it's a phase. It will. It will be better. They do wear their socks. They do. They do love wearing their socks. But sweaters. They are complaining about itchy wool and not the right fit. And um, uh, so I don't knit for them as often. And it's okay because I prefer knitting for myself. I do love that the most. But when she said it and I said, oh, sh shall I reply to the test knit? And she said, okay. But she was also, uh, she said, I don't, I'm not sure, mom. I'm not sure when it's finished. You don't have to do it. But I, I ignored that. I do it. I bought some wool, some yarn. I showed it last week from Etna, uh, Yerbo. Um, Etna is the Dutch um, web shop from Yerbo uh, in the Netherlands. I have a discount code. Um, I'm I'm not sure if it's interested interesting for you. If it if they are only delivering in the Netherlands, I don't know. But my discount code is discount code is it's a Sarah. 25 you can 25 percent um discount on everything so maybe it's interesting you can find it below um this is a non-superwash sportwear yarn uh it's from 
I guess it's from New Zealand. I, it's not Swedish yarn. Um, but she wants a black and white version. Black sweater, white color work. And I love that idea. I don't want to have a black and white sweater. But now I have to yarn the wool. I do want to have a black and white sweater. So last night I cast it on. Uh, I have to free my needles. Um, um, so that's why I uh, couldn't start earlier. But last night I cast it on uh, the sweater. And it's a new construction to me. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, I, I did read something, but in my mind, it doesn't work when I'm reading a pattern and, and I think, oh, that's that's the way it works, especially when it's a new pattern. So I'm, I have no idea what I'm doing, but um, I started. It's, I, 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 I think, I don't even know what the construction is. Uh, a satin sleeve construction, do you call it like that? I don't know. It's in the pattern, but I don't remember. Um, I made a little mini swatch. I'm a very lazy swatcher, so I cast it on 28 stitches and I knitted a few rows and then I could uh, I picked my measuring tape and I, I was measuring and I said, oh, it's okay, it's okay. I did go down one needle size because I'm a loose knitter. Pattern says 3.75. I knitted with I knit a uh, back and forth with um, 3.5, and when I uh, are the, the jo when I join in the round, I will go up one needle size, and maybe when I am at the color work I uh, section, I will go up another needle size. Uh, I didn't swatch that. I uh, I just will see it. But I'm quite happy with the feeling of the yarn. It is quite itchy. So my daughter is a bit afraid she won't wear. She will not wear the sweater. But I said it's okay. Uh, it's a bit. Um, I don't think I fit in this size. Um, I have uh, my thoughts uh, about it. I thought, should I, can I can I. Um, adjust uh, can i adjust uh, a test knit neckline uh, or do i have to do it like i don't know i'm not sure and i also i don't understand what i'm doing at the moment so we will see we will see what is happening uh, i still have the hope i make the sweater exactly as it is and my daughter has an extra warm layer this winter and she will wear it because when you are wearing it the wool will soften up i hope and um and she can wear something a turtleneck uh, shirt under it and uh, uh it's quite cold always in our house so she can use it uh, anyway so uh, we shall see and uh, how it went and i will definitely make one my own um with a lower neckline i guess because i love the look of the sweater it's perfect the curve sweater you can find it on rebecca's instagram and when you um uh, put in the hashtag on instagram you can find something about it but it's being tested now and i guess um uh the plan her uh the the pattern will be out uh the end of november i'm not sure if i'm right but you uh you will see it and i will keep you updated because i will work on it um uh every week now i love it i love it black yarn so i have a good light in the evening to see all the stitches uh, but i love working on it i'm looking forward to finish it uh, now for uh, first to work on it and i'm very uh, uh, i'm very curious how it will work out this sweater and how the size will and if i can put it on this sweater was also not for myself but i'm very happy with it this i i i i a little bit dreaming of oh you don't want it i can put it on oh i do like the high neckline i'm happy with the sweater oh it was not my plan to make it for me but oh now i can add it on my wardrobe i'm I'm a bit, I don't know the word, stick em. I'm hoping for that a little bit. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's see. Oh, also this week is the start of the Mystery Knit Along. This Thursday, the Mystery Knit Along from Stephen West will start. And I think you all know what I'm talking about. And if you are if you don't know, uh, go to Stephen's Instagram and website and whatever because it's a, it's a big knitting happening uh, every year. Last year, I um, participated for the first time. 
I wasn't, it wasn't my plan to participate. Now I have seen it and I have heard everything, everything about it. And I, um, I don't felt it. It was, it is not my knitting style. It's not my style. It's not what I wear. It's not. And I absolutely love the idea of a mystery knit along, but it wasn't was not my my thing and i was absolutely okay with that but the day the pattern uh, he released the pattern and and the first clue from the mystery knit along came on uh, revelry i um i i had a li little bit of fear of missing out i don't know but i suddenly i felt i have to join i have to join but i didn't have the yarn so i i was in my yarn stash i oh there are the baby booties on the ground now. Um, this is my uh, this is my uh, my shawl from last year, the shawlography. Uh, I didn't have some the, the right yarn, so I um, uh, go through my uh, went to my yarn stash and I um, dyed. Oh, I get my phone is always uh, almost empty. Uh, uh. I, I think we will make it. Um, only the pink was the original color. The other one I dyed myself. I'm not a dyer, but I'm playing with, with it now and then. I have no ambitions to become a dyer, but I do love the results uh, for, for this yarn. And I absolutely loved knitting this shawl. Oh, it was so fun. It was so much more fun than I expected. I expected it. I, I, it wasn't my thing, but I have, I had so much fun and I, I do love the result. It's, it's absolutely, it's a piece of art, but I don't wear it. <laughs> I, I have wear it, uh, I worn it once in the woods, but uh, yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's too much, I guess. Too much color, too much pattern. It's too, too extravagant, I guess, uh, for me. Um, but uh, I love it and I'm very proud of it. And I also absolutely keep this shawl myself. I won't give it away because it's, uh, yeah, it, I, I, I'm quite impressed. Uh, I was quite impressed. I could make this. I could knit this because it, it looks so difficult, but it wasn't. It was um, just, it remembered me again that um, with taking little steps, you can come everywhere. <laughs> So every when you see the complete shawl, you you think, oh my gosh, it's it's so complicated. But when you do it step by step, um, uh, together with Stephen and his pattern and his videos, it's not complicated at all. That was my experience. So I'm very looking forward to start this um, Thursday, and um, uh, of course I will show it in the podcast and. Um, uh, I think it's maybe a good deadline. Every Thursday, the pattern will be uh, go out. Uh, the, the next clue will be go out. Should I? Can I get it on Monday to be finished for that week? I'm not. Maybe it's a bit, um, a bit uh, too much uh, to do. I don't know how much time it takes, and I have a lot of other stuff to do. Um, so we shall see. But I will definitely uh, show my result next week, and I will warn you uh, so you can. Um, uh, when you don't want to see it, it's a mystery knit along. So when you don't want to see the result, uh, you can um, uh, stop watching uh, in time. So I will um, do it at the end of my video, I guess, at the end of my episode. Okay, um, then let's see. I ah, yes, one thing I want. I have some uh, acquisitions. I'm uh, addicted to buying yarn and I'm sure I'm not the only one. I do have a lot of yarn in my stash and every time I think, oh, it's enough now, make something of it, make something. And then here in Europe, I don't know, Let Lopi is quite hard to get. And um, I was ordering at Edna. Um, uh, I, the, the, I got a box um, to promote Edna in the Netherlands and there were two discount codes, one for me and one to share with you. And that for me was uh, was a very nice discount code. So last week I showed you some yarn and um, uh, I bought it and this yarn, I bought it with a quite some discount. And uh, then, <laughs> then I didn't bought as much because I thought you have enough and eh, just take it easy, take it easy. Um, and a few days later, I thought, oh, but I didn't bought that. And 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 because when the 
<laughs> I panicked. You can see, I can talk. I panicked. I thought, oh, but but maybe other yarns will be out of stock too. And I don't have the yarn I want to. And how could I not buy it? And um, I go uh, to the website uh, again and bought with my other discount code. Everybody can use uh, another, another bunch of yarn. Uh, I bought, let's see... Uh, I have another one. Where are you? Hmm. I I had another one. Oh, I don't know. Only three, maybe. No, I I guess I had another one in this color. This is Ulrika Nature from uh, Svarta Veret. It's Swedish. I don't say it. Uh, I love the colors. It's a DK weight. I guess it's non superwash, but I'm not quite sure. But it's a DK weight yarn, and I don't have one uh, ball, yarn ball from each color. I don't. I do have more, but I only want to show you the colors, so I could see me. Knitting a Cargill sweater in one of these. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely? And I also have this yarn from Yerbo Alpe. It is in all the browns and the whites. And now I'm happy and now I'm feeling this complete um, lovely feeling of I have enough and it's okay. But I also know that it would... <laughs> It could be over that feeling when I'm yeah, seeing some yarn and buying it again. But now my money is, is gone. <laughs> I don't have money for new yarn and I don't need new yarn. So um, it's okay for, for now. It's okay for now. I'm absolutely sure that I'm not the only one who's feeling um, the need to collect yarns and wanted to have them all. And I'm, I'm quite sure it's a common feeling on their knitters. I do know there are knitters who don't, don't who doesn't want to have a big stash and, and the, the, who feels not comfortable by having a big stash, but I do. <laughs> so I do have a big stash. And I, I, all my money goes to wool, wool right now. I don't buy new clothes or, or shoes or whatever. Only, only the yarn, all the yarn. <laughs> so and that's, I'm absolutely okay with it. So, um, I think I've told you everything I wanted. Um, I'm still quite struggling with my Dutch. Uh, no, not with my Dutch, with my English. And I, I'm not asking for you to say, oh, it's not okay. If it's okay and and it, it doesn't bother. Um, I, uh, I think it's quite annoying um, when I'm watching other uh, podcasters. Um, uh, I watch Kia from Kia's Boat or. Um, Jana from the Finnish knitting stories, they are not struggling so much. They choose to write sentences and words to avoid uh, words they don't know, know. But I'm also, the grammar is, is, I'm struggling with the grammar. So I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I'm still enjoying making this English uh, episodes a lot. I, I absolutely do and I will do it. But I'm, maybe I have to practice something so I know the rules I fresh up the rules and I do it right and um, uh, yeah maybe I have to oh, I don't know I don't know how maybe I have to do a little uh, grammat grammatical course or maybe I have to, <laughs> to take a look in the school books for all my children <laughs> maybe that works uh, I don't know. We shall see. But it's okay. You don't have to reply. Oh, it, it doesn't bother me. Uh, it, it's perfectly. Uh, I know a lot of you uh, think that. And when you don't, there are a lot of perfect English podcasts. So that's not a problem. But it's more. Um, uh, I, I can stand when I when something doesn't work out. I. I like to talk a lot and I like to talk quick and my head and my mouth it when I when I'm trying it in English I'm um uh, it takes too much time so uh and now I am looking for how I can um improve that so I'm thinking about that so it's not uh, it's perfectly it's okay but uh, I uh, maybe I have to do an English grammar cor course course when I when I went to school I wasn't motivated <laughs> to learn all the stuff and now I regret it. Um, but you're never too old to learn. So 
only first I want to knit. Maybe I just have to look at all the English knitting podcasts. I do already, I do. Um, yeah, but I only speak in English once a week. I can understand everything, everything, but I never speak English. Maybe I have to practice uh, talking English with in 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 reels. In, in uh, have a English conversation um, instead of talking to the camera. When maybe I have to practice that, but it's quite exciting to do that. <laughs> we will see. Okay. Um, I wish you a very nice week with a lot of knitting time, with a lot of crochet time and um, 